All right, y'all. We live action. We live action. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hemi, Hemi. Crystal, what up? Jacob is here early. Yes, y'all. It's going off right now in Afghanistan. And I thought that we could talk about it, guys, because learning is truly everywhere. And just because tragedy is happening and so many sad things are happening, we still have to be having our eyes on the prize to be moving forward and be learning from the things that happen around us so we don't repeat similar mistakes and we don't fall in the traps and so forth. So we're going to talk about Afghanistan and the U.S. withdrawal and what it means for you guys as students and as pre-meds and how you can be better as you watch this all go on, this tragedy go down. So let's hit the intro and let's get right into it, y'all. I just saw Junior hop on here. What up, Junior? What I teach you guys is transformation. If you didn't dominate, changes need to be made. So I give you guys entire systems that make you new. But stop making excuses. Stop whining. Stop, right? Get at it. No excuses. Just dominate. All right, Rosanna's on here now. Uthum's made it in. Michael, what up, y'all? What up, everybody? We are live action. I am Dr. Andre Pinton and the Study Doc. And as always, I'm here to help you be more positive, more productive in your life so you can right do great in college, get into medical school. Chris is in the building. Rambo in the building. So we're talking about Afghanistan right now and this U.S. withdrawal and what you guys need to know as students. And this is a hot button issue, and this is by no means a political stream. So we're going to talk about this in a way that you guys can learn from. This is educational. This is not about the politics of it, but we got to break it down, right? Because it's the real world. It's what happens around us. The first thing I want to say is this is an absolutely tragic, terrible, horrible situation. And I can't imagine what these people are going through over there. And I feel for them. My heart goes out to them. I'm praying for them. I hope that people are going to be okay through what's going on, okay? With that said, we have to pay attention. We can't look away from ugly. We can't look away from bad situations. We have to learn from them because sometimes we put ourselves in similar bad situations that aren't as bad as this, right? But that are bad and that are catastrophic in their own ways. Okay. The first takeaway I want you guys to understand is that when things like this happen, guys, there's so much negativity in the world. We got COVID going on, Delta variant plus, we got, you know, this happening. It's easy to snowball everything that's bad that's happening in the world and then put it right on top of your Sunday of crappiness because something terrible has happened to you and you say, oh, everything's the worst. Why should I even try? You can lose hope. And I don't know for you guys, right? I've noticed it through COVID is like all the things that used to be kind of annoyances to you guys, things that could have been like, you know, oh, that's a speed bump. All of a sudden become solid brick walls that you feel like you can't overcome. You feel too overwhelmed with all the negativity around you. So what I want you guys to do is to remember that just because bad stuff is happening doesn't mean it's happening directly to you. And you can't let world events weigh you down and let you get off track of what you're trying to do. At the same time, I think this highlights the importance of our humanity and us caring for one another. As you hustle and as you grind to get to your goal, if you have to step on people's heads to do it, is it really worth it? Right? You've got to have care and empathy and compassion for people. And when you see people and you see that they don't look right, they look a little perturbed, Maybe this is the day where you help somebody. You go up to them and say, hey, listen, I know you don't know me. I don't know you, but you look like you're going through something. If you need an ear, I'm here to hear you. If you need a hug, I'm here to hug you. And if you guys ever met me, you know I'm a hugger because I feel like huggers, you know, everyone wants to feel that embrace. There's something good. Something trusts you. They open their arms up to you, give it your chest. Something, I don't know, feels great. And so give more hugs, y'all. Spread more love. Call your loved ones, some you love them, all that kind of good stuff because life is too short. Life is too fragile. And there are terrible things happening every day, every which way. So we got to be more, we got to be bright lights, right? In this, in this sea of darkness and stuff happening out here. So that's the first thing I'll say. Now, the two big takeaways for you guys as you guys go through your career and how you can be better pre-meds from the situation are the following. The first is that we have to understand in life, in your student life, in your career life, and everything you're going through, there are situations that are no win situations. And when a situation is determined to be a no-win situation, it's better to lose early. Do you hear me now? In life, there are no-win situations. And when that occurs, and when you recognize this, and when you see this, it's imperative that you lose and you lose early. Yes, okay? The Afghanistan situation is terrible. The U.S., would, would, they withdrew, right? And it's awful. But 
they had to withdraw and fairly could have withdrawn earlier. And the reason I say this is because if you break down the situation, the U.S. has been there for 20 years. That's two decades, y'all. That's longer than some of you college kids have been alive, which is crazy to me. I just saw a thing the other day that said <laughs> people born in 2003 are now 18, which is nuts, right? But 20 years they've been in Afghanistan. And in all that time, right, been trying to reform, trying to put in infrastructure, trying to build a government, trying to liberate people, trying to set things up, build an economy, and so forth. The question you guys all have to ask yourselves is what progress has really been made? Right? If you go through what's been going on, okay, and it's been 20 years, people are saying the U.S. should not have withdrawn right now. But the question that you have to ask after you say that or you think about that is, would it be better if the U.S. withdrew next year or two years from now or five years from now or another 20 years from now? What would happen? What would be different? Would it still be the same thing with the Taliban takes over in less than three weeks and people run for their lives? And in this last 20 years, right, in this situation, I got to break it down. I got the stats right here, okay? The cost in terms of money, man hours, and lives for the U.S. occupation is off the charts. Let's start with the finances of it. According to Forbes, the U.S. has spent $300 million per day on average for the occupation of Afghanistan, okay? In total, over 20 years... Already, that's $2.25 trillion in spending, okay? It's hard to understand big numbers like that. So to put in perspective, if you were to add the net worths of Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and the other 30 wealthiest billionaires in America, it still wouldn't add up to $2.25 trillion. Rosanna, I said 30 million, three, sorry, $300 million per day, $2.25 trillion over 20 years. If you break that down in terms of American citizens, for that same $2.25 trillion, they could have given every American $20,000. How many of you guys could have used $20,000? How about $20,000 in loan forgiveness? We'd be arguing for, right? Think about that. It's insane, right? That number's nuts. It cost the U.S. $85 billion just to train the Afghanistan army. Another $750 million annually in paid wages for the army. $85 billion in training, $750 annually to this army to sustain the army, and this army folded in two weeks. 20 years folded in two weeks worse than all that right we spent all that money over there tanks guns all those kind of things if you guys have been watching the videos the taliban is literally joyriding in u.s tanks down the road <laughs> have you guys seen this it's crazy people are are huddling into their houses these guys are rolling down the street in tanks the u.s government paid for it's nuts y'all in terms of deaths 2,500 U.S. military deaths, 4,000, this is, I was crazy to me, 4,000 U.S. civilian contractor deaths in Afghanistan since the occupation. Right? 4,000 U.S. civilians. All of this money, all of these lives, and the Taliban takes over the whole place in three weeks. So what have we accomplished in 20 years? Very little. The worst part of this, the worst aspect of this is crazy, is that I didn't know this. Afghanistan is one of the world's leading producers and distributors of opium and heroin. Did you guys know this? <laughs> it was entirely new information to me. I was like, huh? The entire 20 years the U.S. is there, they've been top three in heroin distribution, heroin distribution in the world. It's crazy. So very little accomplished, y'all. The way this relates to you guys, right? And the lesson is that some situations are no win and it's better to lose early is that for you guys, right? It's twofold. You guys get involved in a bad extracurricular, right? You're in a research lab 
and you know the research professor doesn't care about you, has no plans to give you your own project, you don't get any direct interaction, you aren't growing, you're not excited about what's going on in the lab, none of that stuff. But how many of you guys stay in a lab because you feel like, oh, they took a chance on me, uh, I asked to be here, so now I'm here, I gotta stay for forever eternity, even though I'm not benefiting from it, even though this is a losing game for me. How many of you guys stay in those activities? Right? How many of you guys are involved in an extracurricular? You sign up for something. It sounds like it's gonna be cool. This club, and you get in the club, and you're like, man, this club's kind of whack. Like it's not what I thought it was gonna be. I could probably better spend my time elsewhere. But we don't because we're loyal, right? Oh, it's the right thing to do, guys. It's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to go on and put yourself in a position where you can make an impact and you can make a difference, where you can elevate yourself, so you can make a difference for your family. Those kind of things matter. And when it comes to these situations where there are no lose, and we see ourselves in these no win situations where we can't win. It's better to lose early because every single second, every single minute, every thought you give to that activity, to that experience, is there's an opportunity cost to that. Because while you were spending time there, giving thoughts there, giving focus there, you weren't giving it elsewhere where you could have been bettering yourself, where you could have been making a difference. And so that opportunity cost is problematic. Additionally, for many of you guys, is you recognize when you send people emails to get involved with stuff, the first thing they ask you is, well, what's your experience? Oh, sorry, we can't help you, you don't have any experience. Oh, what, 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 right? And you worry about applying things, you're like, I don't have any experience. Well, every second you spend in a fruitless activity is time that you're losing out on building other experiences. So if you take more time into something else, you'll build up experience, you'll build up opportunities, and you'll have that longevity, that skill set to be able to make success, to be able to make an impact, to have longevity in an activity to really make a difference. You know what I'm saying? So we've got to make that shift, that change to say, no, it's time to just let this go. Let this go. Who understands what I'm saying right now? Who's with me? Who understands? Yeah, right. Oh, and Christopher said lithium too. I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. You guys all with me like this video right now. If you guys are with me. Okay. The other side of this, that's the professional side, but the personal side of a lose lose situation is that there's so many of you guys who are in a relationship that isn't conducive with your hopes, with your dreams, with your, even at a basic level, your happiness. Yet you stay in that relationship knowing it's a loser of a relationship. For what purpose? And this one hits home for me. It's maybe why I talk about dating so much. Because I, I, I say I have no regrets, but like every time I really think about it, I have five major regrets in my life, five. And you know what they all involve? A woman. Five regrets, all revolving women, like all, all, all involving women, it's crazy. Don't be in a relationship, whether it's platonic, whether it's romantic, that doesn't benefit you, that isn't productive, that isn't positive, that isn't fruitful. What are you doing? If you're, partner, your spouse is a energy life vampire. Why are you with them? Right. And what's sad about this and, and what you guys don't see about this is you're like, Oh, it's just, you know, it's just a relationship, but no one really can understand. And you know, he's this way, but blah, blah, blah. And you, what you guys don't understand is that that little relationship that you have right now, that is trash that you think is, Oh, it's good enough. It's fine. It turns from boyfriend, girlfriend to husband, wife. And what's terribly sad about that is I have several students who married the wrong guy, who married the wrong woman. And now I have students, right? My students who married this guy who wasn't that supportive when they were in pre-med. And now all of a sudden the guy has a career and now you're trying to advance yourself to medical school. And he's like, well, wait a minute. If you're doing this, you're busy doing this. You're busy doing this. This doesn't, and they don't support you when you really need it, when you're going through MCAT, when you're going through applications, when you're struggling in medical school, when you have long hours, they're not gonna support you then. So if they don't support you now, they're not gonna support you then. Cut ties. And oftentimes we don't cut ties. They're like, oh, you know what? I spent so much time already in this relationship. <laughs> I, I spent so much resources building this relationship. I finally got them somewhat functional, right? I finally shaped their behavior in such a productive way. Give it up, y'all. Because the more time you spend, you'll be angry. I'm telling you. I've been there. I spent three years. I spent three of a four year relationship, like looking back and I'm like, man, I should have left the relationship three years ago. What was I doing? And I'm even more mad. Had I left three years ago when I was upset about possibly losing a year of investment in the relationship, now I've lost four. Gosh, it's terrible. So remember that, y'all. 
Some situations are lose, lose, lose. You cannot win. So then it's better go ahead and just lose early, cut ties, and move on to the next thing. Are we good? That's point number one. Are we good? Point number one. If you are with me, like the video right now, y'all. Dr. Pine said we are live action. Yes, we are live action. Julian, what up? Yeah, exactly. The more time you spend, the harder it is to let go. And that's what's been happening with the U.S. Everybody's been like, oh, we should pull out. Nah, you know, we just, well, we put so much time in. We haven't accomplished anything. Like, well, we got to keep going. We got to keep going. And then nothing ever happens, right? And that's the truth. One talk all said it. If they don't support you now, then they won't support you in the future. And worse, this is the reality. They won't support you when you're down. How many of you guys have friends, have family members? It's all good when the gravy chain is good. But then when tough get, when times get hard, when times get difficult, right? Like you have friends who love to go party with you, who, oh, you're paying for dinner? I'm coming. But then when you're hard up, when you have a, sh- you need a shoulder cry on, they disappear. You can't get a hold of them. Ding, ding, ding. Sorry, the number you've tried has been disconnected, right? How many of you got friends like that? They ain't going to change, y'all. It's not what you need. The second takeaway from this Afghanistan situation is do not throw good money after bad. Don't do it, y'all. And the reason I bring this up is twofold. It's actually an Afghanistan lesson, but then it's also a general life lesson. How many of you guys have seen posts, links, websites saying donate here to help Afghanistan? Who has seen these posts? Donate here, save Afghanistan. And you click and give them your PayPal number, your credit card number. Oh yeah, take this money, help the people of Afghanistan. Okay. Specific to the Afghanistan situation, guys, do not click on those links and give them your money. Do not donate money to links for Afghanistan. Why am I saying this? Because your money's not going to help the Afghanistan people. Your money's not going to help the Afghanistan people. And I can say that with confidence. Why? Because the question you have to ask yourself is, is wait a minute, if I give them $10, so this link, this PayPal account, how do they get the money to the Afghanistan women who are being oppressed? Hear me and hear me now, y'all. The entire government of Afghanistan fled. The army of Afghanistan fled. The U.S. government fled. Anyone who was there as a peacemaker fled. The only people in charge are the Taliban. So if you donate to Save Afghanistan, I want to know where they're sending the money. How are they going to get it to the girl whose family has been how are they going to get it to that girl, y'all? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You guys have seen this. They're knocking on doors, killing women. How are they going to get the money to that woman? It, it seems obvious. But every single time there's a tragedy, everyone pops up all these, oh, save the earth things, and everyone goes and donates. And I'll give you guys a practical real-life example, okay? I knew a guy. Remember when Black Lives Matter was going on? People were marching in the streets for Black Lives Matter. So I knew a guy who was a black guy who took a coffee can took a coffee can and he wrapped it in white paper and he took a Sharpie marker and he wrote black lives matter on it. And he cut a hole in the top of the like plastic coffee can top and he got a lawn chair and sat out front of his apartment on the, on the marching route and put a can out in front of him and said black lives matter. And people on the March were just dropping dollars in the can. No questions asked, dropping dollars in the can. He then took the money from that can and spent it on himself. And he says, well, listen, my black life matters and they gave me the money. So I'm spending it on myself. Black lives matter. And that seems ludicrous, but that's literally what you guys are doing. You're just handing money to a link, having no idea where that money's going. At best, they actually do try to send it to Afghanistan. But you know who's going to get it? The Taliban. At worst, they're keeping the money. So stop. Okay? That's just for the Afghanistan part. (laughs) That's the truth. The second part of this is for you guys as pre-meds. As pre-meds, I have seen so many pre-meds who are so passionate about making a difference, are so passionate about a cause that they're willing to bankrupt their future prospects for said cause. 
and I say this, right? I had a student and she was at a major, major university. And this major, major university has very low diversity. And she was a black woman. And she said, listen, we need a place for black women to come together. So she started a, a chapter of a black sorority at her predominantly white institution. Okay. And she started this sorority. And as I'm talking to her, I'm like, hey, what's going on? Like, I'm looking at it. Your grades are falling off. Like, what's, what's going on? She's like, oh, you know, I've been so busy trying to keep this sorority going. I'm like, wait, what sorority? She said, oh, I started a chapter of so-and-so and so-and-so, uh, you know, to get more black uh, women together and have a place they can go. And, you know, there's only like three or four of us right now. Um, but it's a lot of work and, you know, the other girls aren't, you know, as passionate about it. So they're not really, you know, doing a whole lot, but you know, I'm working hard and I'm, I'm going to get it up. It's going to be bold. I'm like, huh? She's like, yeah, you know, they really depend on me. And I'm like, you need to let that go. And she's like, no, 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 no. Like if I don't do it, no one's going to do it. And I said to her, I said, wait a minute, if you're giving all of yourself, not just in terms of time, but you're also spending your money and you're a disadvantaged student, why are you spending your financial aid money to put on events? For people who, right, you're doing all this stuff to build a sorority. You're saying it won't survive without you. My question is, is a year and a half from now, you're going to be applying to medical school. You're going to be leaving the medical school. Who's going to keep the torch going? Who's going to keep the sorority alive? What you're doing right now is wasted effort. You're throwing bad, you're throwing money and time and effort into something that ain't worth it. It's not going to pan out. It's not going to pay off. It's not going to sustain. It's not sustainable. Right. And she's like, no, 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 I'm gonna keep doing it. She kept doing it. It hurt her grades. She spent all that money. And in the end, right, that sorority folded a year after she left campus. So she stressed herself out for three years to have a sorority fold less than a year after she left. Right. You was there for 20 years, folded in three weeks. She was there for three years, folded in one year. How many of you guys have been involved with projects, right? You're so passionate about it. But it's a waste of your time and effort and resources to put time into something that isn't going to pay off. Recognize this, y'all. So if you start a club, you start an organization, you're a part of something. When you see that it's not going to sustain, stop. I see so many students who write these what these clubs do is they give you a bunch of raffle tickets or event tickets to sell. And then if you don't sell them, you can't be a member. And then when you don't sell enough, what do you do? You buy them yourself. What? Please. That's why I was never in a fraternity or anything like that in, in college. I'm like, wait, you want me to pay to hang out with you characters? I'm not with it. I just can't. But we don't see it that way, y'all. You guys see like, oh, I'm helping the, the club, the organization. I'm buying these raffle tickets. You need your money. You guys, you guys are poor students. You need that money. So stop. The other major way I see people throw good money after bad money if you guys understand what I'm saying right now, like the video. There's too many of y'all here and too few likes. Y'all passerbys, like the video right now. If it's your first time here with us, make sure you guys subscribe. This is The Study Doc, Dr. Pine said. I'm at thestudy.cross social media. What is the other way that people throw good money after bad? Is med school application season. You apply to 25 schools, 40 schools. You get rejected from a bunch of them. So instead of saying, oh, you know what? This isn't my year to apply. What do you do? I'm going to add 20 more schools to my list in September, in October. That'll be the ticket. That'll get me into medical school. No, guys, that's throwing good money after bad. Clearly, medical schools don't want you at this current point in your career. So what you need to do is stop giving them more money to just to reject. You're paying for rejection. You're paying to get hit in the face. Instead, save your money. Start strategizing how you're going to reapply, what you're going to do before you apply. That way you can use that, all that money you're about to spend, use it next cycle to expand your pool. So that way next cycle, if you apply to 25 this cycle, you didn't get in. Next cycle, you apply to 40 schools, having improved your MCAT score, your GPA, your research, your clinical experience, whatever it might be the next year. But we can't just be throwing money on top of money. Someone said that was five years ago doing that, right? <laughs> Right? It's ridiculous. You're, you're a glutton for punishment if you're doing that. Stop it. If you apply and schools start rejecting you like mad, it's not a cue for you to add more schools to your list. That's why students ask me all the time. You know, Pine said, I'm really thinking about my school list. It's not complicated. You guys want to know how do you pick your med school application list? 
pick some reach schools, pick some schools where you're at the goals for their numbers and pick some schools where you're above the goal for their numbers, right? Reach competitive safety schools. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. Reach in the mix competition, safety schools. That's it. If you apply to 30 and 20 say no, don't think, oh, wait, I only have 10 left. I need to add 20 more. That's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Wait till next cycle. Figure out something. Make an adjustment. Make a change. All right, guys. That's it. That's it. And that's it. That's it. Remember, guys, this is sad. A lot of stuff is sad. A lot of you guys have hardships in your life. And I was telling my students last night, we were doing study, let's get better grades coaching last night for my five pillar students. And one of the things that I was talking about with them was the world, guys, is very, very hard. It's a very, very harsh, difficult, negative, um, sad, devastating, tragic world out there. Right? We, I think we all have these like rosy colored glasses where we're trying to be like, oh, yes, everything's positive. But the world is hard. And I think it's important that we keep this in mind as we go through our journey to recognize when you think things are hard now, things can be a lot harder if you don't put the work in that you need to right now. There's a lot of people suffering in this world. And if you are in the U.S., you have the tremendous opportunity to obtain education and through that education, obtain safety, obtain stability, obtain opportunities. And if you don't take advantage of it, it's a travesty because there's people in the world who don't have that same opportunity. And I have a student actually uh, who escaped one of these countries where women are not allowed to receive education. And she escaped one of these countries. She came to the U.S., didn't know anybody, enrolled in college, has done well and did so well. In fact, she was able to bring her sister and her mom over. And now they're all over here and her sister's doing well in school. She's doing well in school. She's going to apply to medical school. And it's all because, guys, right? She, she, she didn't have the opportunity, but she came and made that opportunity. And you guys who are here in the U.S. recognize you guys have tremendous opportunities. Take advantage. And at the same time, when you guys are having a terrible, no good, awful day, when someone is mean to you, when someone hurts your feelings, when a test doesn't go well, remember there's a lot worse stuff happening in the world. And to keep it in perspective and recognize that that failure on that test, that moment of embarrassment, it's not the end of the world. It's not. It's not. It's an opportunity to get better, an opportunity to improve, an opportunity to move forward, y'all. So it's not final and it's not terrible. It's just bad. <laughs> we can come back from it. We can get better. So keep everything in perspective, y'all. Keep your lens on right. Keep that mindset strong as you guys go through your journey. Okay? If you guys need help with your mindset, you guys know my course, the Successful Student Mindset Makeover, is the bomb. And there's a discount link in the description below. I also have two new webinars for you guys. Got an MCAT webinar. And I have a study webinar for you guys too down in the description. So check those out. I hope you guys are having a great week and stay positive, guys. Stay positive, stay productive, stay moving forward, y'all. Go get it. Go get your guys' future. I appreciate you all. If you enjoyed this, take a second, like this video, let the algorithm know that we're having some fun, that we're learning, we're benefiting, and that this was worth 28 minutes and 30 seconds of your time. And I will see you guys all very soon. We're going to be back regularly live uh, every week. Um, we're going to be doing that uh, in addition, you know, we guys always, always have internal coaching for my students, but we're going to be doing a lot more YouTube, a lot more podcasts, a lot more social media uh, coming out for you guys, give you guys positive words. So thank you guys always for joining me. How do we always end? No excuses, just dominate y'all. See you guys next time. That's it for another episode of the study doc show. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, thestudydoc.com. Grab a free ebook. Sign up for every webinar. And if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life changing courses or coaching programs. You have greatness inside you. Let me show you how to unlock it so you can dominate and make your dreams a reality. No excuses, just dominate.